Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast, where we look back at a weekend full of tension at Barcelona. But there wasn't much racing, along with the Formula 2, Formula 3 and Formula 1 Academy news as well. Plus an awful lot of damage racing Indy cars, and they were kind of going around Laguna Segway, but it was quite dramatic there as well. Uh, Laguna Segway? Segway? Laguna, it's not Laguna a Segway. Seca. Did I say Segway? Segway. Sec- <laughs> Laguna Segway. I remember the zoo, <laughs> Laguna Segway from my um, Segway days. No, I don't. I'm talking rubbish now. Rain delays and IMSA, NASCAR boys who wait for it for the first time, race on an oval with wet tyres. I'm quite interested how that all came out, panned out. Uh, and there was a lovely weekend for the uh, BTCC at Alton Park, where the bodywork controversy rolls on. Mm. And they were supported by the Caterhams, actually, 420s. But first, <laughs> in the news, let's have a talk. You know what? Uh, before we go into the news, we got a lovely uh, listener or watcher called Yeri, who often leaves messages about Max Verstappen. I've never been a big Max Verstappen fan, but i got to say, I really <laughs> warmed to this lad over this season. He's become humble and he's become he's become nice. And Yeri become, won't believe you. Yeri won't, won't believe Yeri, you. Yeri, I'm telling the truth. And, and I think how he congratulated, we'll come on to Formula One in a moment, but how he congratulated Lando for his pole position. Yeah. Wow, that was a big smile. And Max is really blooming and blossoming. So, uh, Yeri, but, that's, uh, there you go. Wait, wait until he's got the second best or third best car in a couple of years' time. He might change it if he goes back to the Max of old. <laughs> well, I don't know whether he will. He's, he's, he's matured a lot. So that one's for you, Yeah, What else do you use? There's a lot of controversy um, about um, seats. I spoke to Mike Crack on the way over at um, on the way over to Barcelona. Tried to get a bit of information out for him. I was there last week, not with Formula One, sadly, with Cupra, but that was still quite good fun. Um, and he thinks it's just going to be a done, he thinks it's a done deal with Alonso and Stroll. So no change there. But what have you got in the? We in knew the, that one. It's, it's it's more now that, that science science is the big. Although science says I'm fed up with all this, I need to get signed. Well, flip and sign one then, Carlos. <laughs> um, yeah, but he's but edging now, his best, now, isn't he? Um, Alpine have said, it was going to be Williams and uh, Sauber stroke Audi, but now apparently Alpine are chasing him. So he's up to three different teams. So um, he can't decide which one to choose from. Well, Valtteri Bottas is pretending he can't choose. He's got so many offers, Valtteri. He just can't wait to which one he's going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> Valtteri in dreamland. Well, he could end up at Williams, sadly, I'd dread to see. There was a bit of, I didn't even bother to listen to it. What was all this about um, emails saying, threatening people at Mercedes that they were sabotaging Yeri? Yeri? It wasn't you, Yeri, was it? So, I don't know what. Did you even bother to read that story? Someone's just oh, it's, a threatening it's, email. So, so, I think it's quite common knowledge that lots of times at, at Formula Ones, they'll have one car with upgrades. For example, Lando is the preferred driver in Mercedes, so they'll have his car will be upgraded yeah. and Oscars yeah. may follow a week or yeah. two, one or two races later. And it's probably happening at Mercedes, but no sabotage. Sabotage oh, is no. just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous to but think. That, that was a story. 1,500 people are going to say, oh, yes, let's collaborate and let's yeah. sabotage Lewis Hamilton's car. They're just not going to do it. It's ridiculous. I ignored it. I ignored it. Um, yes. But the other, there is a side story of Formula One seats which also blends in with with IndyCar which I think is a growing formula more and more and more and more every time I watch it and tell people to watch it as the poor old Sauber Academy had Theo Porcher so he was the Sauber man that we all thought should have got um, the second Sauber seat before the Chinese money arrived and Zhao was put in so he was packed off to Japan the, the classic waiting room to race in the Super Formula very competitive Japanese series but then we have this the billionaire boys are on the march again. We already have the billionaire boy Lance Stroll in F1. Uh, IndyCar already has one billionaire boy, a K-Manian, um, who Chip Grassi, one of the big hitting teams, one of the big three teams, uh, they're running a fifth car for him this year. I mean, here's a kid, he's 19 years old. You know, he's done 27 Indy NXT races and not won any of them. I mean, he's competent. He's won LMP2 races, which we'll mention when we talk about the next billionaire boy. Uh, but anyone winning a sports car race, there's two other drivers in the car. So unless you've got all the facts and figures from the team manager, you don't know who's quick and who's not. Anyway, so it's a nice lad, Kiffin Simpson. He's enjoying himself with a billionaire dad. But now number two billionaire dad has stepped in, which has ruined Theo Porcher's life even further because uh, Nolan Siegel's uh, dad has bought him a McLaren seat, Arrow McLaren, in the IndyCar series. 
which has kicked poor Teo Poirier out. Um, and it's this second, well, third, well, fourth, third car for Aaron McLaren. The whole seat's been weird. It all links to Zach Brown. Because Zach Brown's got United Autosport, which ran Nolan Siegel, this kid we're talking about now, and Le Mans, where they won Le Mans in the LMP2 class. It's all the American commentators saying, we must be good, he's won Le Mans. Well, no, you, you got it. If anything, the guy that won Le Mans for Nolan Siegel was um, Oliver Jarvis, you know, who was leading that team. But, you know, maybe, maybe his times were good. But this one seat at Aaron McLaren, you remember they, they um, thought they'd signed Alex Palo about yeah. a year and a half, two and a half years ago? And then the contract, uh, you know, Chip Ganassi said, um, hold on a minute, I think, I think you'll find we've got his contract. So that didn't work. And then there was, um, who went into that seat? Felix Rosenquist went in next. Then they dumped him. Um, and then they got a deal with this David Malukas kid, really talented, doing well in IndyCar. But then sadly, before the season started, he broke his wrist really badly. So they dropped him. Uh, and they put Callum Eilot in first. And Callum couldn't do the rest of the season because he's contracted with sports cars. So then they brought Teo Pocher in from Japan. Come here, come back to a proper... You've got the drive for the rest of the year, Teo. So Teo suffered first getting dumped by um, Sauber, who's supposed to be next in line for a Grand Prix drive. Then he gets... Well, leaves the, straight, the, the Japanese drive. And now Nolan Sego's dad's bought the seat, um, signed up for two years, maybe more, um, and Zach Brown's obviously got a good friend here that's been paying for his sports car racing for two or three years. Probably said, well, well do you fancy, a, you know... I mean, um, Siegel was doing the Indy NXT. But again, he's done two years of Indy NXT. He's had 27 races. He's only had three wins. He's good. He's competent, as he was at Le Mans. You know, he could be a very competent, very good driver. But he's not a standout superstar. He's kicked Teo Pocher back into touch. Is, is um, Teo Pocher a standout superstar? Well, I thought he's won the Formula 2 championship, you know, let's face yeah. it. So, um, you know, he's had some good runs on in Formula FP1s, I believe. I can't, but yes, I mean, I, I would rate him highly. Certainly well, I, I would, I, a crack I, in I would as well, I have to say. But, well, I but, don't know, he brings money to the sport. Uh, but quite funny enough, actually, Malukas, who got kicked out because he had a broken wrist, he's now come back and he had his first race of the weekend with Mayor Shank, uh, which is who, who dumped Tom Blomquist. The more dumping goes on the Indy car. Because <laughs> uh, he was the British driver, but he crashed at India. Tom Blomquist, the British driver, who crashed on the opening lap of the Indy 500, so they, they let him go. So they put Malukas in there. He's now a teammate to Felix Rosenquist. So the two Arrows McLaren rejects are, uh, are now racing together at Mayer Shank, and I hope they beat McLaren as often as possible. Um, but the only <laughs> other news is, is the news that Tiffany Dell has unearthed an epic Unipart um, video from the from when I raced in the 1978 Formula 3 race supporting the Grand Prix uh, and one of my teammates was Thomas Lauder the, the nephew of Nicky Lauder so we had Nicky Lauder in the film uh, it's an epic tale with a with an epic ending so we're launching that on love cars aren't we tonight so bear in mind when he says we're launching in, on love cars we are putting it on our YouTube on the main channel um but it is quite an old film, so you just let your imagination. It's a yeah. The quality, the quality is a bit iffy. I found it all. Yeah, it's, it's it's back to nineteen seventy eight when I was a young up and coming superstar. You were dapper back in the day. I've got to say, it's a lovely film. So, if, it's so about please half watch that. Long, so yeah, it's lo please. Yeah, it's watch a half it. hour documentary. It's a proper documentary. It's not just a YouTube sort of film. It's a, a documentary made by Unipart, who sponsored the team. There we go. Right, so, so nice that segue. That's a nice segue because we've got um, Austria Grand Prix coming up next week. Uh, and let's yeah. talk about uh, the Grand Prix in Barcelona, which was a bloody snooze fest. But let's talk about <laughs> qualifying first in the F1. Well, there was no big shots. The whole race, the whole weekend, the only interest was Lando catching Max. Because Q1, there were no big shots. K-Mag went out with two Williams and two RBs. RBs have been dropping down the field for a while. They used to be top 10. It's funny how they've, they've faded away. Uh, Q2, we lost the other Aston Hulk. He went out uh, with the two Astons and the two Sauber's. The Astons, again, their story of the year is really just, just fading and fading. because They've now been kicked out of the top 10 by the Alpines, who, who are on the up, really. So the Alpines got into the top 10 as opposed to the Astons. The, the guy um, on my flight on the way over to Barcelona was carrying Lance Stroll's steering wheel on the flight and... <laughs> He went to Lou, and I knew there'd be something special in the, his little box. And I said to him afterwards, "Ask what's in the box." 
And uh, then he told me, so I uh, could have had a nice bit of memorabilia there, replaced it with a couple of bricks or something. <laughs> but, uh, he, he, but, he, he, he even tripped up in the, uh, in the paddock as well. He tripped going oh into... Oh, God. And he, and he barged into someone. Didn't he barge into Lewis? Because he thought Lewis held him up. So he, he hip-chunked hip him on the, on the slowing down lap and got more trouble. He did. And, uh, he did that. Oh. And so did um, Charles. Uh, Charles I mean, who did Charles have with Lando. Lando. Oh, Lando. Crazy the real story, stuff. The real story about quality was, oh, quality was just simply, you know, Lando's lap. And Lando's lap of the gods to kick Max off pole. I mean, that was the highlight. No, it um, wasn't. No, it wasn't. You're missing something much more spectacular than that. What? Perez. He no, coming to the top 10. Down. He got oh, into the top yeah. 10 of qualifying. It's incredible. <laughs> and then dropped back out again with his three-place grid penalty. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so the two, two Mercedes, second and third and fourth, and, and um, Lewis beating George. That must be the first time in a while. I'm not, I haven't got me. Where's, where's Stats' own man? It's, it's eight when you to need two, him. and George, I think, has won the last six, but it's eight to two yeah. for, for George. So, Lewis so he, needed, he needed that. Yeah. yeah. The two Ferraris started the weekend of bickering by sharing the third row. Well, then, then Charles out qualifying uh, Carlos on his home territory must have upset Carlos and made him the mood he was in for the whole race. Um, then Sergio. Yeah, I've, I've written down the Sergio. It was sort of next on my list. Oh, oh yes, he made the top ten. But I, he, had, he knew he had the three-place grid drop, but that doesn't mean you don't try as hard as possible to get second on the grid or third, so you only drop to sixth. But he was 0.658 seconds slower the max 0.658 seconds uh, and dropped out of the top 10 as we said from 8th down to 11th and the other bad story is Oscar Piastri really seems to have you know I don't, I don't think Oscar's got worse because he's a huge sound I think he will be closer to Lando again in the future but I think Lando from Miami onwards has just had a little boost of self-confidence I think racing he, drivers need to really get the you need that confidence they need, yeah and so, Oski, he didn't even get a time in the top 10 runoff. He just he met, messed up his one run and went wide and got the gravel and didn't even record a time. So, a bit of a downer for Oscar. I think will bounce back. But at the moment, it's, it's all about Lando. Yeah, I, think, I think there's a yellow flag in sector one on his, on his final go. Um, I was in, uh, but yeah, so he just pulled out of that as well. He's, 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 again, he's got a lot more in him. He's, he's a big talent, Oscar. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think he will come. But he needs some confidence. He needs to. Yeah. Uh, Get a few more results for the moment, but then then Lando all yet again lost his Grand Prix. Lost yet again lost a Grand Prix. He could have won um, this time just off the start, and it's just terrible. No, to say. it's not just off the start. It's not. It was. It's not. It was. He had the quickest car. He had the quickest car. Yeah, but it's not just the start, is it? So okay, so you get into second or third place. Third, third. Held up, George, I, get held up by George. They get held up by George. Then Max yeah. is out of, of DRS, and the race is over. Yeah. From yeah. then on, Max just paces him. I mean, he had to pace himself fast. He's had to pace himself for a while. So the Lando comeback was about the only entertaining thing about the race, apart from the Ferraris clashing with each other and such. <laughs> in fact, I tweeted about, I watched the Formula 2 and Formula 3 race, which we'll come to in a minute, but I noticed that if you if you peel off at Turn 1 and go into the escape lane, it's actually quicker than doing the tighter left-hand corner. And um, Carlos actually did that. As soon as he moved in on Leclerc out, out breaking from the outside, he touched and then he just shot off into that escape road and came out ahead. And because you obey FIA rules, you're not gaining advantage by going off the track. So it was a get out of free episode. So you went off the track, but then you used the correct re-entry around the cone and that <laughs> overrode any overtaking track limits. Well, can, can you believe as well with with Barcelona that for the last two years, might even be three, they haven't had a single yellow flag, let alone a red flag, mm. uh, and all twenty cars have finished. Albon was the only Again, person that went off a little bit. He went on to gravel a little I, bit, I, and I apparently was something wrong with the car. Dozed off and missed that a bit. Yeah, I dozed off a little bit <laughs> during the race as well. But and he said to the team, "What was that?" And they said, "Don't worry, we'll talk about it later." He said, "No, what was that?" He was quite oh, angry no. about what, what, what it was with the car because uh, it just uh, understeered straight forward or didn't stop. Uh, oh, so he's the only one that even touched the gravel during the race. Well, other than a, a wheel or two. Here Lewis, there, but... Lewis beat George. I don't know why Lewis was on yeah. softs and George was on hards. Quite how that ended up because George didn't like the hards. Maybe so they just split, it, split the strategy. They're, they're there, so they wanted yeah. to lose their bit. It's just like the grid, wasn't it? So, so they were on the second row of the finishing line and the Ferraris were on the third row of the fishing line, finishing line. Oscar got up to seventh. Perez got up to eighth. Got up to eighth in a Red Bull. Got up to eighth. 
and all he overtook me were the Alpines. We managed they to not hit shows, each other. That was good. They managed how, to not hit each other. Yeah. It just shows how good my best mate Max Verstappen, that my hero is. Uh, but, but joking aside, it does show how he is. He is a proper class. proper talent out there. He's really a real matured. class. Yeah. Um, the Formula Two is shite. <laughs> We always catch up with the F2 and F3 and F1 Academy news. But F2, I'm really worrying about this team choice. Because with this new car this year, it's been so confusing. Because you're trying to go to the Formula 2, you're looking for talent. This is why I follow the Formula Ford and Formula 4 and Formula 3s and Formula GB 3s to look for talent, to look for kids like, you know, um, our mate. Right, Freddie Slater. Freddie, Freddie Slater, yeah. you know, doing Italian Formula 4. We look for talent. But these, the two boys that are about to be Grand Prix drivers, 99% sure, uh, Andrea, Kimi, and so in the Prima team, and the Prima team used to always have the best chassis, you know, but they haven't got a handle on this new rules this year. So if, you've, if you're the dad and you've just given Prima your three million pounds, your boy's not looking very good because Antonelli qualified fifth and had a, he stalled in the first time, had a 15th and a 12th. Ollie Behrman qualified 15th and finished 21st and 14th. And he was just dropping, but every man and his dog was overtaking. Ollie, Be Ollie Behrman. You imagine all those drivers in Formula 2 in about five years' time with Ollie's world champion. Yeah, I remember I blew him away in Barcelona. <laughs> I was quicker than Ollie Behrman in Barcelona. So it seems like the, the chassis are just... Who's, they're all learning this new car, and some teams are finding the right key to the door, and others just aren't finding it. The commentators make a big fuss about Victor Martin. Because he was another, he was another a, a favourite for the season. You know, he was one of the dominant drivers, winning last year. He was always quick and right up there. He's in the ART team, yeah. um, and he's back on form. He's won the what? No, he, he won the reverse grid race. He qualified ninth, so he wasn't really back and up front with ART. He was ninth and because that came a front row of the grid for the sprint race. He managed to get up in the front and win it. So he's still not really back up in the front because he's only on a reverse red. Whereas the Dams, if you spent your three million pounds on Dams' team and got a drive, and you're an American Jack Crawford in your second year uh, of Formula Two without really having done that much, I think you had won one reverse grid race. He's won last year, um, and he's on pole and won the main race. Brilliant. So hold on a minute. Yeah. Should, should he be in Formula One? Is he better than Ollie Berman and Antonelli? And then there was a lovely story actually. I mean, again another. Just surprise result because he's not done anything since he's been back in form. Is this Argentinian Juan? Not Argentinian, could be uh, Juan Maria Correa. Because of course he's the kid that hit um, Antoine Hubert at Spa, that horrendous crash. Yeah, and he had, he had awful that. leg injuries. The awful leg injuries. So he he dropped out of Formula Two. He was about six or nine months in rehab to get his legs working. Then he did two more seasons back in Formula Three, and he's now got back into Formula Two again. Uh, and he was on the podium. He was actually on the podium in the reverse grid race. Uh, Gugba got pinged for track limits, which were a big flipping thing at flipping Barcelona. Lots of track limits, especially in Formula 3. Um, and he got another podium in the main race, which stuck. So a lovely story for him and his family that he's come back from that horrendous thing. But if he hadn't signed up with Dams, I doubt if he would have been on the podium. If he'd signed with Prima, thinking, I'm in the Prima car. I'm in the Prima car. <laughs> Um, so I don't know how to judge young drivers anymore. It's completely um, thrown the world upside down. Track limits. Every time I look at those track limits, there's one corner, the penultimate really fast corner. I think it's flat in qualifying. But if you follow the car in front of you and he goes wide and just goes over the white line, you can't see the white line because there's a great big car in front of you. So you're just following the car in front. So you get four cars all going off, probably all getting pinged for track limits. And I just think if they're going to stick to this, because the gravel's not much further out, you know, but there's enough, the curb is wide enough between the track and the bloody gravel to put a whole car in it. But if you put it so when the inside tyre leaves the grey track, the They're outside tyres yeah. go in the gravel. So just chop yeah. all those curbs, chop half that curb off, put the gravel up to the edge of the curb. Then as soon as the outside cars are in the gravel, the inside ones leave the track. It's, oh. There was a lot of track limits. You didn't know the Formula 3 results. You didn't know the results until about a day after. Same with Formula 2. <laughs> so there you go. I'm a disillusioned with Formula 2 because nobody knows that's the team. Formula 3 is pretty similar, but not so bad because it's the same chassis they've had for several years now. I think I can't remember when they got a new one. It might be a new one. 
Uh, Maria Boy, I think he's Spanish, pleased the home team by winning the reverse grid race because the front row teammates took each other out while running first and second. Wasn't wasn't a happy party, the Trident team home. But of course, they're not teammates. They're individual kids that both had £2 million spent on them to go out and try and win Formula 3 races. Uh, tyre degradation was big, very abrasive track bus. Always a problem. Grand Prix had the same thing. So a lot of the time they had to, because of course, in the main race, they had to do the whole race with one set of tyres. So those that hadn't kept any rubber were really struggling towards the end. Half but an hour, the best form of three. Yeah, it's pretty a bit longer than that. Pretty forty-minute race, the main race. But the great news, the main race, is that Arvid Lindblad. This um, he's of Indian and Swedish ancestry. We get it all right, but he's British. So he's wearing British flies, British license. Again, he's another really hyped up kid that's come from karting, Formula Four. Of course, he's one ahead. So we've got Freddie Slater, but he's ahead of Freddie Slater by year. But he's only he's only sixteen. Lindblad. Wow. So wow. he's crazy. A year ahead of I, Freddie uh, doing what Freddie... In fact, I think he was out in Macau and Freddie came second and Arvid was the one that won, won the Macau Grand Prix. OK. I was chatting so, to Freddie's um, dad this week. I didn't tell you, by the way. He, he, okay. the guy. I was ch- chatting to him at Silverstone. Uh, very humble but as so, well. Yeah. So Arvid, we've got so many British drivers. Because at one stage in the Grand Prix, Brilliant. we were running second, third, fourth. Freddie's coming. Arvid's coming. Oh, there won't be me, room for that. Me, I did okay in a catering room. That's history already. That's history already. That was last week's <laughs> news. That's so old news. <laughs> the Formula One Academy, they tooled round empty grandstands first thing in the morning. Abby uh, Pulling had another win, another second place. Dorian Quality. Pan was off the pace. She stalled, yeah. I think, at the start. Made a terrible start. Um, had a seventh and a fifth. And Chloe Chambers, American, came through to win the second race by getting out, Ass. jumping Abby. The Haas sponsored girl. But yeah. the trouble is, again, reality check time. I'm sorry, reality check time. But whilst hanging around watching you race, you cater having fun. Of course, there's a Formula 4 race uh, at Silverstone Grand Prix circuit that same weekend, uh, two weeks ago. And Abby was there. She couldn't get to the top 10. I mean, there were 10 young British boys ahead of her. And the same was another round of the uh, Formula Renault Europe, Freca. And uh, you know, last year's F1 Academy winner, uh, Marta Garcia, she can't get the top 20. So... But I mean, okay, okay. The whole point is, we're encouraging more young girls to go karting, more young girls to do Formula Four. So, that, but that is the main purpose. But we can't pretend that yet uh, there is a young woman that's going to get anywhere near um, a Grand Prix car if these are the sort of results when you see them out up against the boys. And we'll come to poor Jamie Chabagel in later, who's also had a bad weekend. But anyway, great for everybody. But I mean, great they're all enjoying a wonderful life, racing for free, going around the world. And standing on the top step of the podiums, it's a good. Okay, should we go? Should we go to that really famous racetrack called Laguna Segway? <laughs> Laguna Segway. <laughs> Laguna yeah, Segway. I went to America. I, have to admit, I, I watched all the American racing this morning because I was up like I watched. The, so I got up early to watch them on record because sometimes that's the only thing you can do. Because they, they both start about eleven p.m. The, the, the NASCAR was a bit earlier. The IMSA was even early. IMSA was on the afternoon, but it was only available on the internet. So you've got to go in and watch it on your computer. Was I was too busy mowing the lawn. The sun came out. I mowed the lawn. Um, so I, you know, but I've got to catch more and more. But you watch IndyCar, watch the quality. Even before you get to the race, if you watch the qualifying system they have, it's just brilliant. It's all over with about half an hour because um, they split the field into two. And there's about 29, 27 cars. It's like almost fourteen in each half. Uh, and you get about two laps with your fresh tyres out, two laps in. They've got this wonderful timing system that happens before the last corner, the pit entry. So you go out of the pit, you do seven eighths of a lap, start your lap, finish the lap, and then go straight to the pits. You don't dawdle around going slowly back to the pits, holding anybody else up. And in just two runs, they'll, they'll pick the fastest six out of each 15. And that, then you have a second session, well, a third session where 12 cars go out. And they just get two runs each. And they've got the timings going up and down, the gaps 0.001 out of being the top six. Um, and then once you're I don't the mind Formula 1 qualifying, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I don't mind the qualifying. I don't like when they go slow and they get in the way. And well, impede, I know that, Faffer. Uh, no. well, that's what I mean, but this like, indicates so much more zap, zap, zap. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's, it's action, action, action. Yeah, but we, we don't want action, action, action all the time. An hour of qualifying, I think, works very well. Three, yeah, yeah. three different I'm sections. I'm just okay. saying... So have you watched American qualifying? Have you watched one? No, no but I will like now. I will. I mean, uh, you I'm will. Reserve judgment. You will. Um, <laughs> anyway, the race, Alex Palo came up to me at the end of the race for Ganassi. 
Uh, you always see, I think he's won the podium the last four races and won two of them. Colton Herter chased that driver, not good enough for Formula One, uh, chased home in second for Andretti. <laughs> and Alexander Rossi, the McLaren driver, came third. And Roman Grosjean was fourth. I haven't got all the race stories. Lots of action, pace cars, people falling off, crashes, accidents, stuff. I mean, there's a lot of um, sorting out where you are. The luck of the draw, you get a pace car at the right time, you know, your strategy. And uh, Laguna Seca is traditionally sort of a three stopper or a four stopper. And if you go for the three stopper, you've got to lift and coast a bit because you can't make the fuel run unless you do a bit of fuel saving. Or if you go to the four stopper, you drive flat out. And, uh, but so you surely that must be the that case. Moment. That must be the case for qualifying as well. What if what if it rains and then you're in the slower section, or what? Surely the track oh, yeah, yeah. rubbers well, the no, track must rubber in. You're always in the same, same session as twelve cars. There's always yeah, twelve but, of you but, out there. But what about the other? So is it done, done, you are you qualify Top six that? out of fifty? Okay, go sure. forward. Okay. So they've never got the same conditions. Yeah, it's not that uh, system. Uh, but but no, for poor James, the Indy NXT was sort of you know the Formula Two as we call it, the Formula Two. Um, After this most spectacular win oh, no. last week. Oh. I mean, it's a different track. Laguna Seca, it's a real sort of roughhouse, bull ring, is curves and leaps and jumps. It's probably quite a physical fighter sort of track. But she qualified 12th. She's just quite, I felt so sorry for her. After all the glory, she finished ninth and 6th. But uh, in the second race, she was 6th place, was 40 seconds down on the absolutely dominant British winner, Louis Foster. Yeah, he was um, brilliant. He had a bad start to the Louis, but he's just been coming on form now, and he just blew everyone else away. So but Tiff doesn't doesn't that make you realise? I don't think that's a negative, for Jamie. It just makes you realise how unbelievably tight that well, yeah. uh, Indian NXT is, how good the drivers are, yeah. how competitive it is, and how bloody good Jamie was to actually win. It's, I know. It, yeah, we all, wrote, wrote, it, some circuits are it, better suited to to others yeah, for exactly people. To others. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's all good stuff. So, Louis, but Louis Foster, his dad spent a lot of money on Louis, uh, but I don't think he's a billionaire, son. So, I'm not sure how he now gets there. He's with Andretti, so the team, same as Jamie Chadwick, the Andretti yeah. NXT cars. So, whether there'll be a place for Louis and Andretti's next year or not, he, he certainly deserves a crack at it, in my opinion. He's done enough over in America to, to do it. And if he keeps going like he's going now, he's going to win every next race, the NXT. Was um, he a previous um, Autosport uh, winner? Did he win? Yeah, he was, in, he was in it. He might have been in it. He, said, he never actually won a championship. I think he was second in GB3. and He, quit, he very quickly went to America where he won the Formula 3 and he won the Formula 2. Or he won the Formula 4 and won the Formula 3. And now he's doing the Formula 2 and winning. So he very quickly went over to America. Um, elsewhere in America, the IMSA boys. <laughs> that was, you can see it on the after. I was watching some of it on the on downloading on IMSA.com with Jeremy Shaw and, uh, of course, Johnny Heinhoff, Heinhoff, doing a wonderful commentary. They, they make those six-hour races sort of so interesting because they've got so much backstories and the, the facts. and They don't shout and scream. And, well, Heinhoff does occasionally. He gets a bit excited. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had, they, had a, they had an awful downfall of rain, northeast of America, same rain that hit the NASCAR later on. Uh, so I had to stop the race for a while. It was absolutely downpours. And uh, I didn't follow enough of the race, but uh, Porsche won it. Uh, Dane Cameron and Philippe Nasser came first. Um, the GT class, we had a British winner of the GT category, Ross Gunn with Aston Martin, along with Alex Ribeiris. So um, for sports car fans, it's always good. IMSA, sit and yeah. watch it all afternoon if you wanted to. Entertaining. I think Chevrolet was second, the Lamborghinis were out there. Uh, NASCAR, a bit nearer them. I forget which track they are. North somewhere, Tilksborough, somewhere, Westborough. Um, <laughs> A fairly well, I flat thought NASCAR track. didn't oh, race if it was wet. I thought they had to wait. Well, that's the whole point. That's why, it was, that's why I, the headline was for the first time. This was it. Wow. This was the epic, the history. Surprised wow. you didn't wake up with your alarm clock on. Um, <laughs> so they, ra- they raced normally until the same rain that had been Watkins Glen came there where and washed them out as well. Um, they wouldn't let them sort of switch onto rain tyres. It's a bit of an experiment. It wasn't a very banked oval. The problem is, I think if it gets more banked, that the, the tyres just won't be able to hold together. Because um, all the rain will run down the banking. So the top of the banking is going to be pretty dry, even if it's raining yeah. heavily. Um, but of course, we raced around Daytona, the sports cars were wet to us. I just remembered that without any problems at all. No, you can do banking. <laughs> I just remembered that. <laughs> um, um, so what they did was when they stopped the race, because the rain was huge. I mean, it just flooded. It was too too wet for wet. Same with the Ibsen sports cars. It was a deluge. Um, so what they did, they, they did a lot of track blowing and track drying. And then they sent them all out on wets. 
So they were all ploughing into turn one on the you know two by two rolling start restart, and just they were all going in different directions. In fact, it was quite interesting. Carl Larson and um, the eventual winner uh, Christopher Bell, who are both real big midget dirt. They they Tuesday Wednesday in between NASCAR race of the weekend, they're off down little dirt tracks on their midgets, you know, full broadside sliding around. So they're very used to sort of finding where the grip is. And they actually went round the flat sort of pit exit road. They didn't even go up the banking. It's only like four degrees to 11. So it's quite a flat banking. She had half the field. There were five wide on this restart with everybody thinking, where's the grippiest bit? How do I drive this car on wet? And uh, they had some spins and it was, it was amazing. It was just interesting. The, the boys out there finding their way. Uh, but Christopher Bell came out to win at the end his Toyota. Um, it was a great battle for, for second place. They did the last three laps side by side after a restart. The, the Ford boys of uh, Chase Drisco and uh, Josh Berry uh, finished second and third. And Carl Larson, can't believe it, was only fourth. He was, the, he was leading Chevrolet. So again, maybe the track suited Toyotas and Fords more than Chevrolets. But again, just entertaining racing, entertaining presentation, but it went on a bit because of the, you know, you have to record, when you're doing NASCAR, you have to record not the NASCAR race, but the two or three programmes that go until 4am after this. <laughs> and then come down in the Monday morning with your cup of coffee, slippers on, press fast forward and get entertained by NASCAR. Do you wear, um, just for our viewers to visualise, do you wear like a cravat and a, like a Hugh Hefner <laughs> type uh, robe, silk? Well, a cigarette and a long cigarette holder. Have you, got, have you got TN, your initials, embroidered on your <laughs> robe as well, in your silken robe? I'll, I'll own up to being a thief now. I've got, I've got a, a, a Suzuka Circuit Hotel kimono that I stole in 19, 1978, I think it was, when I went out to race. My <laughs> first really Japanese... My That's first the Japanese... It's the bedroom kimono. It's not like a you know, big dressy kimono. It's just a little thin cottony. The Suzuka circuit, <laughs> Suzuka circuit, Suzuka circuit. You can't have it back. I wish oh, my little lightweight dressing gown. You um, get a bill through the, po- through the post now. Well, they probably invoice so, Porsche or whoever you're racing with at the time. <laughs> so after all the rain of Northeast America, we had bright sunshine in the northwest of England. Great weekend of uh, Toka racing, where of course the Caterhams were the best. They were the best race, probably. Four twenties um, are brilliant, as we know. Yeah, absolutely. And fantastic our, race our with sponsor, Caterhams. Chris from Dutch Barn, he um he had a magnificent race in the Caterhams in the beautiful blue Dutch Barn car. He uh, came first in class in the second race, and yeah, a bit of damage, but he um yeah did he had a very very good race. Super by the way, competitive. by the way, for those of you who've seen the video of, of the launch of your new Caterham, that bottle of Dutch bum vodka you gave me as my fee was empty. You put water in it. <laughs> Bastard. I want one of the posts. I want a real one. <laughs> so I'm not giving Dutch bun any more publicity. So I've actually had a proper taste of the real Dutch bun. <laughs> Back to the touring car point. So the big four that are fighting for the title. Uh, two had a great weekend and two had a terrible so, weekend. Ash Sutton, Tom Ingram, uh, Jake Hill and Turkington, Colin Turkington. Yeah. So Jake, Jake and Tom Ingram had a win each. Both had a good weekend. Uh, Tom had a win at a second and a fourth and Jake had a win a third and a fifth. So uh, Tom came out slightly on top. Uh, it was Ash and Colin. Colin Turkington. Oh, Ash had the He didn't. Yeah. Well, no, Colin was, but Colin didn't go off. Colin's car wouldn't start. And what was it? On the on the grid for race one, so he pushed off the grid, uh, finished twentieth. Uh, he got to seventh in the second race, which was pretty impressive from twentieth. But then I think he reverse grid pole was sixth, so he missed out, and then he had more problems to finish fifteenth. Um, Ash second in the first race, all looking good. Um, it was really Tom Ingram had the best pace, uh, but Ash in the second race, similar to um, Robot of his teammate. Had a rear wheel arch, a plastic rear wheel arch, pretty car, but I was made of. Just knocked off, maybe hitting the tyre stacks that Tim Harvey thinks is a dangerous and horrible. I'll come to that again later, Tim. Um, but both Robot in race one and Ash in race two had just this thing flapping off. And so, oh gosh, you hear the commentators, well, you have to be playing, because they've had form, because someone in race one, in a way back at the first round of the year, had a bit of flapping plastic, so they black flagged him. But others since then have had bits of flapping plastic and haven't been. So it's all this consistent. All the drivers say, we don't care what the rule is. We've got consistency. Absolutely. The robot agree. in race one, um, I think he finished about fifth. But then he's, he's, he's finished his 20th. So his whole weekend's gone because race two grid is on race one results. 
And then, of course, if you're in race one, you finish fifth, you get reverse grids, so you get three chances of having points. But if you get black flag for a little bit of flapping plastic, um, you, your whole weekend's ruined. All three races are ruined. And the same happened with Ash. Well, Ash in the second race was pushing uh, um, Tom for, for the lead. Great racing. You know, I mean, Ash just tries everything he can, pushing, shoving, nudging. Um, and then this wing flapped open. And then it's all, so, he, so he then tried to knock it off. So, in fact, Tim Harvey... <laughs> Tell you what you should do, Ash. Ash. What you should do is go to the brush it off on a tire stack. That'd be a good idea. It almost said so. So, Tim, but, um, tire stacks are a good idea then, Tim, because you can knock bits of bodywork off them by going so close to them, you're going to hit them deliberately. But that was, I quite enjoyed the bit of a laugh that Tim finding a good use for tire stacks. But much as he tried, he couldn't knock it off. Then even have he's had his teammate, um, Dan, um, when he was going into the Camish. pitch, come close. They tried to, yeah, they tried to hit each other. Camish tried to knock it off as well, which is a pretty dangerous manoeuvre. But it's just a bit of black. I mean, if you're following that, as, as Jade said in the comments, she said, you know, if I'm following that car, I'm not worried. You know, I'm, just, I'm, in a, I'm not in a single seater where it might fly off and hit me in the face. I'm in a touring car. It'll just crunch you. I mean, they've got to... Because there was a bit of controversy with Ash Sutton. He had problems at um, Thruxton, didn't he? His front splitter was falling off, which that's a bit bigger because it's got an aero implication. It's actually doing something. Um, and in fact, in the last race, the reverse grid race, Ash's um, front wheel arch came out and got caught in the tyre. He had to go in the pits again. This time he had to go in because the tyre was so. But um, yeah, the bodywork saga is going to roll on a bit, I think, in BTC6. I think now they'll have to stick to the, you know, any bit loose you're going to be in. They can't well, like you back. said, you can't have one rule for one and another no. for another. But what so if it's take... like one rule at one course, uh, one track, and another rule at a different course, uh, track? So well, no, do you think that's no. consistency? Any, any bit hanging off now will have to be black flagged now because they've taken Ash out of the race from second place. Um, they've, got a lot, they've, got a, they've got a long gap now until their next race. I think I they know, get the, whoever, the summer off at the end know, of July. Stupid. Um, interesting happened that at the first race in the dry with the new tyre rules really came in because if you rate, if you start the if you finish in the top 10 on your soft tyres in the first race you have to use the hard tyre in the second race and there was a huge difference about a second a lap between the soft and the hard so I think it was Josh Cook I don't know where he finished in the first race he was he was running on the hard so he finished about 8th or ninth. but he had to start 8th or ninth because that's the grid is on the first race uh, results and he just came storming through. He was about half the fast boys on lap one and took the lead on lap two, I think it was. I think he actually got into the lead on lap one because he had so much more grip. And we then had good racing. Quite, quite a few of the um, of the mid-team, the, not the factory drivers, were charging into the back of the big names on their soft tyres and having a big dice with them. And um, in fact, um, Jake only got the, the lead on the last lap overtaking Dover. So it was good, entertaining as always. Now they've got this tyre differentiation. There's a bit more of a connivance going on in touring car world to make sure nobody runs away with every race. So uh, that was it. entertaining, that was it but worrying, world of worrying about bodywork gate is going to be a pain. Track yeah, limits. As long as it's consistent. It's so annoying though when you get black. Yeah, but, but, get, yeah, but like they've gone consistent in the wrong direction. They've gone in the wrong direction. Now they've dug it. They've dug a hole. And they can't fill the hole back in again, so it'll just have to be any loose bodywork. But in. if you if you're following, uh, you know, caterums it, with a wing hanging off, I know in an Bumpers open top car, you don't care. You just keep going. <laughs> it's just oh well. The trouble is now. I mean, they, they they do a bit of pushing and shoving going into under braking, so you can now try yeah. and li literally deliberately knock their wheel guards off. And then yeah, but then likewise, it could do it for you as well. So it's it's yeah. a bit of a risky risky manoeuvre. But if you've got nothing to lose, then why not? What's coming up next week, Tiff? The Osterite ring. Well, it's not. It's Red Bull ring. Formula One. Sprint race on Saturday. But remember, Dari's in. Formula Two and Formula Three on the Red Bull ring, which is half. It's like a go-kart track compared to the Osterite ring, which you'll see if you watch the Unipart video of Tiff Nadal trying to win the Formula Three race in 1978. Um... Then MotoGP Asset. I think I said this last week, and you know, I got my great flipping timetable wrong. Nobody seemed to notice. <laughs> I'm not sure they ever listened to this end bit. Um, but they're at Asset in Holland, which is just a great motorbike race. That will be spectacular. World Rally Cars go off to Poland. Um, the Spa 24-hour race, the big, hail, the big event for all GT3 drivers. They'll all be rumbling around Spa for 24 hours. 
the Formula E's. If you want to see why Formula E is the most stupid racing, watch it this weekend because they're back at Portland, that racetrack. I'm not going back there again after this year, but they are now where they're going six wide, a slow bicycle race. And the NASCARs go to Nashville. Nothing happening in Britain, really. That's it. Oh, on that bombshell. I can't say that. That's such a that's such a top top gear Clarkson thing, but it it gets ingrained on oh, your yes. brain, doesn't it? On that bombshell, I've forgotten all about on that bombshell. I saw your mate Hammond yesterday, and you went very well. So, uh, but that was at the drive drive day. But um, glad to see you're feeling better, and we look forward <laughs> to seeing you all next week. <laughs> Cheers! Thanks for joining. Oh, watch the football. What we might be seeing in the crowd at the football? England, thanks England, to, England. Thanks to BYD. Thank you very much. It's beyond <laughs> my dreams. Going to see a football is beyond my dreams. Build your dreams. I was Build close, dreams. wasn't that? You were I was close. close. Cheers.